Hello. Earlier in this series, when I was far less researched and far more gullible, I stupidly recommended a despicable and dishonest YouTuber by the name of Kevin Marr, the FBI informant, who was the subject of the book Cop Without a Badge, a book I am now highly dubious is a good source of truth any more than the Iceman. Since then, I've concluded for reasons I elucidated in posts and video why I was skeptical. He has threatened malicious litigation, known as malicious prosecution, against New York Crime Spot for even having me on an interview. Basically said he would sue him if he had me on an interview again. That's actually a First Amendment issue. This guy really doesn't like the First Amendment, though. And he also indirectly threatened malicious prosecution against me for saying his dumping bodies in the river with Roy is bullshit. Sorry, First Amendment. He then threatened me physically, which I actually laughed at. He's 69, small, seems like he doesn't even know how to fight. In his message, you can see that he says he's a 100% man. I don't know what that is. Like, he's not transgender. I'm sure that was probably a slogan when he was in prison, trying to survive and uh, prisoners were seeing him as meat. <laughs> he thinks because I was rolling with B-Riv that day, New York Crime Spot, last time we saw him, that because I said, hey, I'm not feeling really good right now, and he let me up and so forth, I had him in my guard and he was trying to get up. He didn't, Mar didn't know what he was seeing. We were having fun, and I didn't like that Mar was also filming us. Uh, he thinks that I guess that that means something. Well, no, that doesn't mean anything. I could have tried a lot harder, and we would have had fun anyway, because he's my friend. I do think, though, the fact that you had trouble beating up your wife, well, that does say something. Especially when you preface it with, well, I'm from Brooklyn as a defense for hitting women. Mm. And you couldn't subdue one because she was 5'7". And you couldn't subdue one because she was 5'7". <laughs> Daniel Stop is no gem either, don't get me wrong. They probably deserved each other, but my point remains. He further mocked that I accidentally killed a jaywalker back in the 90s, the mid-90s, which the detectives were able to immediately tell wasn't my fault. I hit a jaywalker that I didn't see in the middle of the darkness. And I told the truth about the details, thinking I'm going to get a manslaughter charge for this. Meanwhile, this idiot is a rat who snitched on people uh, that he worked for to get out of any kind of prosecution. And by the way, he's a proud criminal. He boasts about it in email when he's attacking me and New York Crime Spot. Now, I'm not condemning every criminal. I'm very much for reforming criminals that can be reformed, although people like him, I think, are too despicable to ever really change their values. But not every criminal is. But to be proud, you stole cars is fucked up. He also posted a response later on in email after about 50 emails, which at least cyber-stalking, Indirectly threatening my family, including my including my elderly mom, New York Crime Spot can back all this up. I'm not going to show an image of that by showing me their addresses and the images of their houses. Of course, from 3,000 miles away, he does this because he's a punk. He also sent a copyright strike for posting a clip of his thumbnail in the video in which I debunked him, even though that's fair use, and he does that with Sammy the Bull and Franchese. I'm saying that right. It's fair use, but since YouTube doesn't have lawyers over every strike, who knows if they'll catch that. And the only reason why he did it is because he hates being exposed. He has no problem breaking your rights, tearing your rights up by trying to maliciously undermine your free speech. Well, by the way, he kept calling uh, New York Crime Spot's channel a woke channel. I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about there. New York Crime Spot's moderate centrist. Freddie's family, they're conservatives, and I have Democrats and LeBrons too. The only person I've seen who's actually slandered a cop was Mar on his channel by pointing at his chest with his fucking little stubby thumb and being angry because the cop wasn't impressed with him. This is a narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, probably a little bit of both, if I've ever seen one. Jesus Christ. This dickless wonder always seems to get really tough when people can't do anything about it. God, clearly his parents failed him. So one of Mars' tools in a comment was a while back, I don't know where it's at, he said, you used to support this guy, what's changed? Well, my mind, obviously. Clearly it wasn't because I wanted to be involved with that project, because you look at the dates as we're going through Howard and me talking, you'll see that I already thought he was full of shit. 
long before he did that dive in which he didn't find really anything and there was no news coverage cops didn't take him seriously just like his parents I guess I'd only seen a few of Mars videos and back then I was a little more gullible about which those videos in retrospect didn't make any sense at all and I was first born that Mars seemed like he was full of shit regarding his Roy DeMail videos by none other than Freddie DeNome's family. If you're familiar with Murder Machine, the book, and Roy DeMail, you're familiar with Freddie DeNome, the actual wheelman for Roy. He's the infamous race car driver and hitman Roy DeMail used that was a major character in the book. Been corresponding with Freddie DeNome's stepson, Howard, who was born from Freddie's first wife, Peggy. Peggy and Freddie broke up for a while and then got back together when he went off to witness protection and then later broke up. But he was around when Freddy killed himself. I've also been in contact with Freddy and Richie's younger brother, the one that found Richie dead, unfortunately, Robert. There were actually four Denomi brothers. Sadly, one died in 1980, who seemed like a really good guy, too. Uh, if I recall the specific date correctly, I'm not looking it up right now. Now, it was only Freddy and Richie who were involved in crime and one of their cousins. Robert is a very gentle guy, gregarious, and Howard is awesome too, and they in no way were affiliated with Roy's criminal enterprise. When I first believed Mar, well, they told, warned me about that, that he seemed like he was full of shit. I went to the car that they had dumped, you know, with Mar, the last time, even though I was feeling very sick and hadn't slept, even though I was starting to think this doesn't make any sense. Why would Roy dump cars where people could spot the car bobbing down the river and spot him pushing it from across the river or near the bridge or even nearby? He'd just leave it in a trunk like he did with a Millie, which was the murder of the year prior, and which he would do with Future Vic. You know where to stop it, and they're not going to find it for days. It's a lot less risky than throwing it in a river. Also, why would he be doing this with a loudmouthed Irish guy who he has no reason to trust? I mean, he went on to be an informant, so obviously he had no reason to trust him. Nobody knew who this Mar was. Also, why would Roy be dumping cars anywhere near Queens? That wasn't his territory. His territory was in Brooklyn. His auto theft operation was in Brooklyn. The mob divided things up. And he also had a crew by then doing things for him. Mar keeps saying that he was a nobody in 74. No, he wasn't. He had about 15 to 20 guys. It's in Murder Machine. I also detail him even further in my book. So, as you can see on my Facebook, Howard warned me about Mar making shit up. Robert joked about Mar saying it sounds like a witch hunt. They were correct. I was a fool on this issue. But I was a fool that changed my mind. The New York Crime Spot can verify everything I said. When we went to the spot where he claimed that he dumped the car with the body in it, well, a drone was put in there, but the drone didn't work. And then he told us, well, let's just say we found something and come back. No, 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 no. It's okay if you want to make things dramatic for special effects. It's okay to me if you want to even find the car first, if there was a car there, and then say, hey, we found a car, you know, a later in a bit with a dramatic video so you don't look like an idiot if nothing's there, like Geraldo did back in the 80s with Al Capone's fault. However, I have a code, and I consider actually lying to my audience, misinforming them to be a form of betrayal. And I'm trying to make a channel that stands for something more than just a concern for hits. So I posted on Facebook that this piece of junk drone didn't work. I was just annoyed at the drone at the time, not that it really was a piece of junk, and that we didn't find anything. And for posting the truth on Facebook in a status, and that's all I did, he threw a temper tantrum, called me up, screamed that he doesn't want to see me again. I'm surprised. And before I can say anything, he hangs up because he's a thin-skinned jackass and a, and a punk whose ego was hurt by the truth. Now, I believe he might have pushed a car in there, although he think he probably just threw a steering wheel in there when nobody was around. It's more likely. But, you know, it's possible that he found a steering wheel in on his own. Roy didn't have anything to do with it, though, and he's never shown any evidence that he knew Roy at all. No evidence. He does have a history of bullshit, though. He was once fucking the same prostitute as Jill Rifkin, the serial killer, back in the 90s. I mean, that prostitute was strangled. He identified her for the police, which is good. Hey, great, Mar. And then he hoped they caught the killer. Good. Eventually, of course, Rifkin was caught. Suddenly, Mar recognized him. He claimed that he walked in one night, seen Rifkin strangling that same prostitute, or one of the prostitutes, 
And Mar, who's only, I think, five foot six, maybe. He always looks very small. Uh, not very large, anyway. No offense to you small people, because, hey, you could be tough. But he boasted he charged Rifkin, who's a far larger guy, I think about 6'2", and basically knocked him out with one or two punches, I guess, with his Napoleonic complex power. Then he dragged Rifkin out of the room and claimed that Rifkin at some point in the future must have come back for his broken glasses and the prostitute forgot that he was trying to kill her, I guess, and left with him. Never mind he didn't have any clue of what happened to her before and wasn't able to put two and two together that I guess that he saw this killer strangling her. No, now he suddenly knew who he was. Now, well, Mar has about six brain cells and a dozen rocks in his skull that's driving his intelligence. I think he could have probably even managed to figure out, remember, that story happening to tell the police if it had actually happened, which suggests he made the story up and made a victim's murder about himself, which is a scumbag thing to do. Now he's exploiting another victim whose dad vanished 50 years ago, and he's waving around something that looks like a cow bone. They feed those to dogs. You know, I could be wrong, it could be some other bone, but it's not a human bone as he was finally forced to acknowledge. And then he just tossed it in there or took the first thing that the divers gave him, one or the other. Then he claimed, without any evidence, that it's probably a human bone of this victim. Uh, there's no evidence Roy ever killed this victim. None. And when he couldn't show that it was human bone, suddenly now it's a woolly mammoth bone, I guess. That's what he's going, saying that it might be a woolly mammoth. At one point, he claimed that the mob victim, Masucci or something like that, had like $100 million back then. Yeah, he must have been richer than almost every mob boss. Never heard that one. Now he's claiming that mammoths died 11 million years ago, even though they only evolved 5 million years ago and died about and died about 5,000. They were alive during the time of the Egyptians. Most people don't know that. So now, if you guys want to enjoy him or believe him, hey, that's fine. You can like him, whatever. But I've given you the information, and I want to show it in documentation since he keeps cyber-stalking, sending fake accounts. Uh, making false claims of copyright, and is also constantly uh, threatening to maliciously prosecute, which is, by the way, something I can counter sue on and have a lawyer sanctioned on, because he loves making shit up. He's a piece of shit. Can't stand him. I'm not going to say anything about what I think further about him, or, but his channel and his book are not trustworthy sources. I would not buy that book. I mean, unless you want a really boring fiction account. And I wouldn't trust this channel. But in any event, hey, you guys enjoy it if you do, but the info's there.
Oh, and I guess by geek he means anybody who's smarter than him, which isn't much. But I'm a proud geek. But by whatever standards you hold geek, if I qualify for that, it's still better than being trash. And while I haven't read it much, I say that his book probably isn't a very good account. And while I haven't read it much, I say his book probably is fiction, mostly, because he's not a reliable source and he's dishonest. Oh, the above is Anthony Nelson, incorrectly called Tony Nelson Murder Machine. It's Anthony Nelson, former agent. That's his opinion on me. He knows I try to get things accurate. So if Kevin Moore is going to keep up trying to strike me with these... Anyway, that's enough. He really should go and do his own thing now. Because this doesn't exactly look good when he sued his ex-wife for a million dollars. And then boasts about lawsuits that you can't actually make and shows that he's dishonest. Finally, when you claim that you know so much about the Mafia as I think is one of the... Finally, when you claim to know so much about the Mob and Roy and all these stories, you probably shouldn't confuse Richie April, who was a Sopranos character, with the Gemini Twins. Oh, you don't know who those are, do you? Richie April. Sopranos character season two. That's embarrassing, especially when you respond to a, especially when you don't know it's a joke and you respond to a fan that you've heard that story. All right, later.